Okay. Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're here in Dubai in Daniel Modalski's. Hey, nice. Uh, very nice Dubai condominium right here. Uh, Daniel is a 23 year old Israeli e commerce entrepreneur. Uh, so thank you, Daniel, for your time and for thank sure. you for being so generous. Yeah. Okay. No worries. So, I mean, first of all, um, people who are watching this video, this could be anybody in the world, business owners, whoever it is. Could you give an introduction of yourself as well as what do you do, who's the people you serve, and um, yeah, in general, your business? Yeah, for sure. So, um, as you said, I'm Daniel, I'm 23. Um, my main businesses are in the e commerce field. Um, I've played around like since I was. 16, 17, I think I got into the field, had a like, hard time uh, succeeding in dropshipping, but like I tried for a bunch of years, like a couple of years till I got the hang of it. Um, then I branched into like more of branded products rather than dropshipping, uh, which that did pretty, pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and we're growing every year, very nice. I also do like on the side, I have a podcast back in Israel, also like a YouTube channel, which grew nicely uh, but my main focus is just to try to uh, grow my business as much as I can and also like document and do the fun stuff because mm. I like doing like the, the I like doing content just like you yeah. Um, and, and yeah I like it so that's me okay great so I mean take me back 16 years old technically you've been in business for seven years yeah. so you are technically a veteran yeah technically. Uh, why would a 16 year old Israeli child or high schooler start doing business um, I mean Come to think about it, um, like I've always been competitive, um, and also I grew up in an area that is like my parents are like business people. Mm. Uh, like where I live, like it's like people Sorry, wire Tel Aviv, right? It's near Tel Aviv. It's yeah, like a, a okay. place, but like it's mostly successful people, like personal houses, pool stuff like this. So, uh, an interesting fact I learned is like the number one. Um, if you want to find out if someone will become rich or not, like the number one thing you need to know, like statistically, is the zip code mm -hmm. where you were born. So I think like growing in an area where you see the big houses that cost millions and millions and you see the nice cars and you see everything and like everyone has it from your perspective because you live there. So like, why can't I? Or like, wh they're not special. Like you get to know the people. They're the parents of my friends, stuff like this. Yep. They're not special. They're not smarter than me. They're not anything. So you understand that it's possible. And also I'm very competitive. So ever since I was young, like I was, whatever I did, I tried to be good at it. Like, but when I was younger, I wasn't like physically fit. Like I tried sports, stuff like this, but I, I wasn't. Um, later I discovered gym mm. and I got bigger and stuff. So, yep. so that was nice, but like I, I couldn't compete there. And so... I got into gaming um, and, and there like I, I found like you only need a brain and like instincts and, and you don't have to be strong and whatever so I got into it. I got very good at it's like shoot FPS games and then Fortnite and then Clash Royale. I was a professional player like signed in a team, flew oh, to, shit. Yeah, <laughs> flew to competitions, like won the, the regional one like and, and got into London like uh, lost in the quarterfinals of the world championship so I did pretty well with that mm. and, and I think at one point like I also documented everything on YouTube I have a I don't know if you know I have a gaming channel with like yeah. hundred thousand subs there uh, but I got tired of it and then I was like okay what's next and I want a little bit of money like as a 16 year old I think I want like 20 25 thousand mm. dollars doing the entire thing or 30 thousand use almost the entire thing to buy a car. Um, but then like you get the hang of it, all right, if you make money, you can buy stuff and, and it's nice. Um, and then I was like, all right, how, how can I make more of it? Talk to a friend who did affiliate marketing at the mm -hmm. time. He's now probably my best friend, uh, but he did like at the time, like 20,000 a month in profit or something like this. I was like, listen, I heard about uh, dropshipping. What do you think of that? He's like, eh, I don't know, but like, yeah, give it a try. Um, and that's where I got into the stuff. I mean, it, it was, I wasn't driven by, by like, I, I don't want material stuff. Like, I mean, it's nice that just now we, we were over a, a figure and I just bought a Rolex for like, it's, mm, it's, an entry, entry, it's <laughs> the entry level because yeah, yeah. when you get here, like people look at you, they look at how you dress, at what you have, and then they like determine is this guy worth talking to or not. So mm. I had to do this, but like, I, always I look at it as a competition. I don't really care about the, the money, but just like, all right, if I get more, if I make more money, then I get further and further down in the like, up in the leaderboards. Yep. So this is how I look at it, and and I think I got sucked into the business game as a game. So mm. this is why uh, I liked it, and you know this game has many 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 levels to it, and I'm 
Just way, stopping. way, way below yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the top. I'm not even near. So yeah, I'm, I'm here to play and I'm trying to get to the top. <laughs> That's really interesting. But the thing is, I get it when you're in your zip code and stuff like that, right? Yeah. But if you talk to your parents, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure your parents don't do e-commerce, right? Yeah, they don't do e-commerce. Okay. So like, why isn't it that um, you didn't follow in their footsteps or learn what they are doing? Um, I think um, they're dealing like with um, uh, like mostly uh, real estate and stuff like this, which is stuff that either requires a lot of time. Mm. Like you buy stuff, you wait 10, 20 years, it appreciates, you sell it, you have profit, stuff like this, or a lot of capital. And for me, I have not much like, and, and I don't want it to do anything asking my parents, can I borrow money? And like, I wanted to do stuff to start from zero. Yep. And I heard a lot of stuff. Obviously I got the ads for people in Lamborghinis. Like I got it from dropshipping, stuff like this. I fell into the trap, believing that this, this is like a way to make millions and millions without too, too much effort. Obviously I was young, um, but like once I saw enough people, I dove into it and I saw enough people that are successful. I was like, I think I'm smarter than the average guy. Um, and I think I have cap capabilities. And I think that if someone was able to figure it out, and this is my mindset until today, if someone can figure it out, then I can figure it out. Mm. Um, I, I can work. If they're smarter, I'll work harder. If they're not as smart, I'll, I'll, I'll manage. Uh, so this was my mindset. Like I saw that people were successful there. It's just by luck. I didn't like do a, a lot of research. I got a few ads for dropshipping, got into it. And once I start something, I rarely quit. Like I, I really try to make it work yeah. unless I'm like, all right, it's, it's not possible. Like for me, I, for example, sports, mm. I was like, Okay, all of my friends weighed 50, 60 kilos. I was like 35, 40 kilos at the time. I was like, I cannot, I cannot push them or, or get into this. Um, but yeah, I mean, this I, was possible. And so I got into it and honestly, luck. That's, that's why. <laughs> okay. The next <laughs> question I have is like the most logical steps. Like you're good at gaming. You yeah. signed to a professional team. Yeah. You're getting stuff, you're getting attention, getting popularity and stuff like that, right? The most logical steps to become a streamer slash whatever, right? Yeah. So why, why didn't you? I mean, 20 to 25,000, maybe the streaming market and the advertising market's not as mature back then, but that could have been. Yeah, yeah. At, at the time, at the time, I think it was before streaming was. Uh, before the Aiden Rosses. Like, or yeah, the, way before, way yeah. before. It was before Ninja even. Um, it was just like Clash Royale was the hype before Fortnite. Okay. So like right as Clash Royale died down, Fortnite started to pick up. And like at the time I was like, okay, do I want to, and I was really good at Fortnite as well. Do I want to get into this path or no? Um, and honestly, I think I was sick of like, to, to be at the top of anything, mm -hmm. you need to put your everything into it. Like at mm -hmm. one point I think Clash Royale had 20 million active players, stuff, stuff, something, something like this. And I was like top 10 and to be at top this- Top 10% or top 10? No, literally top, top 10, 10. In, the, in the world. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I yeah. got eighth, I think, in the world tournament and like number one in the uh, uh, region, like the five regions and the top two of each region, uh, regions were flew to London to, mm. for the world championship. And so I was literally top 10. And in order to do that, I had to play every day, all, all day and, and learn and, and you, you, if you don't do anything for a week, you, you lose your muscle memory and stuff. And, so I was kind of tired of it um, and I just wanted, you know, to, to do whatever I want to. And I'm like this today. If, if I don't feel like doing something, yeah. I'm like, all right, this is, I'll take three days off. I'll think about what I want to do. Um, but I want to create a life where I can do whatever I enjoy and also make money doing it. Um, and, and I think I figured, I figured mm. out money in a way, like yeah. how it works and how I can hit both my goals and also the lifestyle I want to have. Um, and, and yeah, this is a nice insight. I, we can get into that, but yeah. That's, that's fantastic to hear. Did you go to university? No, right? No, no, no. Okay. And even I like kind of dropped out of high school. Like kind of, <laughs> kind of. Okay, so you're already dabbling in that. Okay, Yeah. got it. How, okay, so uh, met your friend, now your best friend, affiliate marketer and stuff yeah. like that. Um, started drop tripping and stuff. T tell me the journey there. Yeah, so I try to drop ship. I remember this. Uh, there was this guy. Everyone knows him, like Gabriel Saint Germain. Oh, um, yeah. OG bro. OG, OG. <laughs> he, he, I saw his YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he like killed it. He shot like five thousand, ten thousand a day, fifteen thousand a day yeah. dollars. I was like, what? How is this possible? Um, bought his course. This is actually, uh, it was actually a good course. But yeah. I thought, hmm, he revealed his product. He sold uh, poster correctors. Mm. 
why don't I sell the exact same thing with the exact same ads and the exact same copy because it worked for him? Mm. Not understanding that maybe 5,000 other people bought the same course and have yep. tried the same thing. And so I tried this, didn't work. He suggested in the course that like you should do uh, dark colors, tried that, didn't work. I spent like, as I said, I saved, I think it was $25,000, $30,000. I had like more money from YouTube and stuff. So let's say I had total 40,000, used 28 to buy a car, then the rest like on drop shipping, whatever I could. Yep. And I like, I remember first month, I think I lost 2000, second month, another 2000, like, and I spent 1000 and got like 100 in sales. And I was like, okay, people are buying, it must be working. Mm. Um, maybe I need to let the, a lot of people said at the time, you need to let the algorithm optimize. So it's like, all right, I just need to spend more and over time it's gonna work, which is not the case. Yep. Um, and even today, like looking back at it, it was a lot of like bad... Uh, experience. Yeah, it's, it's the, just, the, mm. experience taught me that, you know, algorithm is not gonna fix, uh, uh, you know, one to, t like, literally you spend $10 to get one back, it's not gonna fix that. If you spend 10 and get 13 back, then maybe if you let it run for a couple more days, you can get to one and two, but like, it's not gonna do this uh, crazy thing. Um, so there was a lot of guidance that I needed that was lacking and also information. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kept on trying uh, until I literally ran out of money, um, almost. And then um, I stopped and I was like, oh, what's going on? I talked to my friend mm -hmm. he was like, listen, I think what you're doing right now is you're copying other people all the time. You, you look for winning products, you copy, you copy, you're doing it. Why don't you start from scratch, like think and, and do it? Because this is what he did. And I was like, no, nah, I don't think so because all of these people say that's how it works and you need to find mm. a winning product. That, mm. that just means I need to test and test and test. Finally, I'm gonna hit. Um, and I kept on trying, lost more money. Uh, and eventually I was like, all right, something, something's not right. Um, I don't really, remember exactly how it was but i remember i started to dive a bit deeper into marketing psychology to understand why people buy um how it works like instead of like copying get into like the, the base of it before there was facebook ads before there was anything like how did people sell um and then you get into like the og copywriters gary halbert or, or uh, eugene schwartz and and i got into the whole entire thing uh, also an amazing amazing book is called cash advertising i don't know if you yeah, read it. Yeah. yeah incredible and i think there it's like the 80 20 of marketing if you read that book and i read that book and i was like oh, oh all right i, I think I, i'm starting that, to get it and then i started to to uh get things going a little bit um started to suddenly you know get to a thousand dollars a day with three hundred dollars profit which was yep. nice for me um and over time it got more and more and more um and I mean, I wasn't, I didn't get to crazy scale. I think my top was like 50,000 a month or something like this, but it showed me that it was possible. And at the time um, I started, I discovered like an opportunity to get into actual brands yep. and I had enough experience and understanding and the ball was, was rolling. I was like, all right, I think I can put my, my skills into this. And we started like this brand and um, I mean, it basically took off from day one. Yep. Which is basically the, the best sign possible. Yeah. It's a winner, yeah. 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 Took off from day one, um, like 2020, right where, right before COVID hit, we started, and then COVID hit, and then like amazing performance, obviously. Mm. And 2021, like we iOS uh, 14, that, that sucked, but we, we pulled through, uh, and we kept on going until now we're growing. I, I really want to... Um, I really want to make this like a multi nine figure brand. This is my, baby, my thing right baby now. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I'm going to go hard into this, but yeah, thanks to dropshipping, I like it's luck. I, I yep. was, I, I was persistent for two years, even though I, I didn't make money and I lost money, but I knew that the skills I'm gaining and over time, I'm going to understand what it is. And with the opportunity presented itself, I had the skill set to take advantage of it. So, I mean, yep. they, they, people get lucky, but if you're prepared, you're going to, be able to capitalize on your luck and I was prepared. Um, today I understand this, but at the time it was a lot of luck. Yep, understood. What was the product that was doing 50K per month that allowed you to get that experience? I mean, I, it was like, I had a few products. I think one was like a shark chain. A um, shark chain? Shark, literally chain with a shark on it. Oh, like a chain, like jewelry. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I was like, <laughs> for people who are passionate about sharks, show the world, whatever, something like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one did pretty well. Um, I did. I don't remember, I sold a lot of stuff. Like I think total I tested like 80 or 100 products. Um, 
but I think there was not much in common. Like I tested a lot of things, some mm. worked, some not. I think there was a like toy for cats to play with them, like laser that moved automatically. And I was yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. angle I took is like, like when you leave your home, your cat's alone and he's he's bored and, and it's not fair to him. If you can get them uh, get them a playmate that's gonna play with them when you're gone, then they're gonna be feel better and like kind of killed them into buying. Yeah, yeah. That worked. Um, <laughs> So a lot of this stuff, but I started to understand like how to get people to do what I want them with words, uh, which is copywriting. And then like, obviously another big mistake, by the way, to anyone who's watching and wants to get into e-commerce, like I let like Indians do my, my ads on Fiverr for $5. The ad is like 80% of, of what's going to drive performance. You cannot outsource this. Like you can no, yeah. outsource a lot of things, customer service or right. You can outsource at the beginning, a lot of stuff, but like the ads, the copy, the scripts, if you're going to outsource this, you're not going to win. And this is by the way, like something a lot of gurus over time said, yeah, you just need to pay this editor on, on Fiverr. They're gonna create mm. this video. And no, it's not working. Like this is the part where you need to learn, you need to be good at And once you can make good ads, you can make money. Um, this is the number one thing. And, and I think people don't, don't talk about it much. I mean, today, maybe, yeah. Yeah, understood. I think a lot of products, they are like, uh, like you said, gimmicky right? in a sense that they, you know, they, they feel a need, a shark chain, a shark chain. I've never seen a billion dollar shark chain company. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you also mentioned that you encountered or got the opportunity to start the brand. Yeah. Um, how did the opportunity go about? And um, it makes sense to transition. It's obviously uh, risky in the short term or wh whatever you want to call it. But um, how did you encounter that? Yeah. yeah so, without like... Uh, obviously, I want to keep it in stealth mode, so I'm going to think of yeah, how yeah. I can phrase it without without giving away too much. But like, basically, someone I know, um, someone I know has been working on like a specific product, mm. but they didn't have any experience in the online field. Yep. Um, and so I thought there was a lot of potential to it, but like, it wasn't going. Like, it was doing, it was selling like word of mouth and maybe some B two B sales, but like, mm. I don't know, fifth. Like locally, yeah, local just five yeah, five thousand yeah. dollars, I think, a month, yep. something like this, and, and barely profitable. But obviously, she was working on it full time, um, and I was like, "Listen, I think, I think we can do something here." Um, and so I, we, we talked, we 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 were able to to understand how we want to go about this, and then we started. Uh, we launched it online. Mm -hmm. I was basically in charge of everything relating to online marketing growth, whatever. It became strictly online yep. quickly thereafter. Um, and we grew ever since and it, it was great. Like I, I'm not a product guy. Obviously over time I learned I learned it. As mm -hmm. you get into it you need to understand like supply chain and working with suppliers in terms and like how this whole world uh, works. But I didn't have experience at the time. And so I think I thought it was a great um, it was a great chance and opportunity to to use my skill set. Yep. Um, and, and it paid off. And I think that this is another thing, like if you want to choose a partner, you need to find one that has skills that complement yours. A lot of people start partnerships just because I like the guy or like, I mean, it's cool. Yeah. It's, he, I like marketing, you like marketing, let's do something together. No, like mm -hmm. how can you complement each other? I, I mean, yeah, partnerships only work when the, like, the sum of the two parts are greater than the, like, what they are separately. Yep, understood. So basically you took an offline concept that was already working, amplified that, and then scaled this shit. Then. I wouldn't say it was working because it wasn't. Um, $5,000 per month is still proof of concept. No, nah, it's not. <laughs> it's, re it's really nothing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, really no. nothing. At you least people are buying the thing. I mean, yeah, yeah you, you see that someone's buying it. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know, but we were like, we, we were going to know within a couple months. So it's, yep, it's yep. Just like a test and it, and it proved itself. So yeah. Yep. Okay, so decided uh, product looks great, maybe price point, AOV, etc. Everything looks fantastic. Um, how did the first few, you said it worked straight off the bat, right? So obviously it's a winner, quite easy. Yeah. Uh, then you need, need to start building teams when you're scaling. Uh, tell us through that process. Yeah, so well, we, we were far off from teams um, because I mean, how it was like first year, I think first month was 50,000, then we grew. Um, Sorry, this is January 2020? Uh, it when? was April. April, April 2020. Okay. And then we started like mid of April. I think we did like, I don't know, 15K the first half and then the second half like 50K and then like 60, 70. We grew each month. Yep. Um, and yeah, there was no team. Basically, it was me. And then we onboarded like at one point an agency, mm. which I was like in charge of managing. 
this agency is like one person who's in char charge of all the media buying, other person who's in charge of all the creative stuff, and then I'm like in charge of making sure everything is, is, is going. Yep. Um, and so we ran with them for a while, which I think is, if you find a good agency, which is hard today, I, I don't know what happened, but like I think maybe it's all the, the, the gurus. courses, gurus, yeah, yeah a lot yeah, of yeah. people start agencies without being able to deliver. They can sell, but they cannot deliver, mm -hmm. which is very, very bad. But at the time, it wasn't that bad. So I was able to find someone, obviously question him. I saw he had like content. Yep. So I looked at his content. I was like, okay, this guy knows his stuff. Talk to him. So that he listens to the same people I listen to. Yep. So, so I was like, all right, I can trust the guy to, to start. I also uh, negotiated a, a deal where most agencies at the time, also a lot of them today were based on spend like a percentage of spend fixed retainer like, and percentage yeah and, and for me i was like i don't like the, the the way the incentives don't align because his incentive is to spend as much as possible yep. and there is no correlation to roas basically spend as much as possible without us terminating the contract so being on the edge of where we don't want it but like playing on the edge of that and then he gets the most money and i was like i don't want to play that game yep. let's figure out some uh model where were aligned on the incentives yep. and, the, and so we uh, negotiated a perf performance model which I think is why we got more attention uh, than other clients and also we grew so fast that it made sense and suddenly mm -hmm. he was that's, like all that's right. upside for him basically. yeah and we were I okay. think by far his biggest clients by far by far yep. um, and so we grew a lot and at one point like I kept on learning I never like was okay I'm managing him I don't need to I learned mm. I went to conferences I listen to podcasts at one point i bought your course i i, I don't know if you remember i was like uh, anything i can get my hands Just on business i'm expense. buying i'm buying yeah. i'm buying i'm learning um and at one point i was like looking at what he did and i was like i think i'm i think now i'm better i can do it myself started to offer some stuff he didn't have the capacity to test everything mm. and i was like all right i think i'm gonna take over and so like this is i think start of 2021 i took over and then i was yeah, I always hit, like, I had a few months before, which things went, like, the moment I took over, like, 200% growth that month, and then we kept on growing, um, but yeah, then there was iOS 14, and then, like, it's not like I was managing anyone, mm. it was like, I'm making the creatives a lot of the time, until we were, I think, at the time, 200k a month-ish, um, I was making the creatives a lot of the time. I was on the ad account. I was uh, writing the copy. I was changing the website. I was doing pretty much everything um, because it didn't make sense for me. You know, like out of 200K, usually like 25% margins, that, mm. that, that is what makes sense. Yep. 25, 30, and then you have to pay salaries. Um, and I mean, if you're a big company, you make like 10, 20, 30 millions, then sure, like it's going to be 3%. Yep. So you're going to end up with 25 or 22 or whatever. Um, and they're like, all right, I need to pay a salary. I don't know, 10K, 20K. It's like almost half my, my profit. And so I was like, I don't think we're ready for someone else yet. Yeah. I'm going to keep on growing it uh, to the point where it makes sense to bring someone in. Mm. Um, and so I think all throughout 2021 till mid 20 or start to mid 2022 i was on my own then we brought in some juniors like i was i don't want to pay uh 10k uh uh 10k a month for someone who's uh experienced Expert, yeah. let me let me pay like 4k or 3.5k to someone who has little experience and i'm going to teach them um and i started doing that brought one brought another one um and in hindsight it was a mistake because when your brand grows that much mm -hmm. and the brand is reliant on your or your uh, skill. Um, you, you cannot, you don't have the luxury of like taking the time off and explaining how to do stuff. And juniors mm. are gonna make mistakes, and then they make mistakes, and then it affects the business. Um, and this is like a lesson I learned. Like, if you have a fast-growing business, you want to grow fast. Pay. I don't mind if I'm gonna like right now. If I find someone good enough, I'll pay the 100k, 150k, because I know that like, all right, I'm gonna not make my money within back within two months but once he settles in i get all my time back yep. plus i get an employee that has experience that is going to grow the business um and net net it's positive but at the time i didn't have that mindset um and so yeah we started growing the team i started writing sops dove into this like how you run the ads how you uh making like how, how you optimize how you think about writing scripts all of this stuff which was nice um but as i said didn't work then we, uh, again, after a few months, fired everyone, 
back. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Fired everyone. Okay. Literally, like I hired two. I mean, yeah, it was two guys. Like I hired two guys to be the juniors. Okay. Um, and then like after a few months, I was like, this is not working out. Yeah. Let's let's clear the the thing. Mm. Like obviously, we were quite of a big team there. We had like a few customer support. Um, then we have a logistics manager, and then we had like the marketing. We had an agency, but like, um. Yeah, in house, it was like no, no for juniors. Um, ever since then, we were looking for seniors. Recently, I found one, so it took us almost a year to find someone who's competent. Like every month, I did like two, three interviews with uh, headhunters trying to find the right people. Mm -hmm. um, and just a few months ago, we were able to hire my uh, head of growth, which I'm very happy with. Um, nice, nice guy, super smart, um, super like good vibes. Um, and yeah, this is my experience with building the team. I think this is what we're doing right now. We're also expanding internationally. Like I'm taking like all international under myself mm -hmm. and like- International meaning outside your core market. Yeah. Okay. All international like I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and like the core market I gave to someone else. I'm supervising, I'm giving him money to build out the team. Obviously mm -hmm. we're interviewing people together. Um, I'm, I understand what kind of structure I need for that to run. And at the same time, I'm doing what I have done in 2021, like being a one-man show there, but like now I'm doing it internationally, which obviously is much bigger. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the opportunity is much bigger. And I, I, I think like, I, I, don't, I don't believe there are many people at, at the scale of what we're doing with basically one person on, on the team. It's crazy, but um, I understood that this is how it should go. Like I crack how it should work, how it should go, mm -hmm. uh, the angles, the, the creatives that work, the, the positioning, the offer, all of this stuff. Once I, I know what's going on, all right, let's get, let's bring people, let's put systems, but you don't want to rush it. Yep. 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 Very smart, very wise for 23 year old. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, um, yeah, I've seen brands obviously scale from seven, eight figures, right? And then uh, there's a part of me also where it's like, if you scale hard and fast, you get the revenue, you get the cash flow in, then you run the entire ship on break even. Yeah. So you get maybe 20, like you said, 15, 20% margins, right? Then you take all of that, dump it into salary, but then again, because you're a brand, you need to buy inventory and stock. Yeah. What's your opinion on that concept of, okay, I don't care about making money at all. Like, I'm, I'm good, right? I got my Rolex, whatever it is, I got my whatever. I got enough cash flow to survive. I'm just gonna go minimalist and then run entire thing and break even so that we can scale like super, super fast or take some money, cash for yourself. Like protect yourself, you know what I mean? Like what's your thoughts? Yeah, about? so it really depends on what, what your goals are, right? Because um, I think for people who are not insane, I'm, I'm not normal in, in this. Like, yep, nine, nine figures, <laughs> not normal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, if you wanna go for that, like yeah. there, there's no reason, right? You have 50 million, 80 million, 200 million, it, you can either own the jet or like rent the jet. Like it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but as I said, like it's a game and I want to win the game yep. because it's, I want to win games. Yeah. Not because yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, need yeah. the money. Competitive uh, fulfillment. Exactly. Yes. And so if you want to play like this, I, I feel like you have to take risks that are, um, that are not necessarily logical for someone who's thinking about their, their life. Plus paychecks. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so uh, from my experience at least, like I didn't want to take out salaries until basically end of 2022. Mm -hmm. I didn't touch the money, everything goes into the business. Um, obviously, like I always managed to, to like, if I wanted to, in 2022, I started doing content and stuff, it worked. And then you get some money from this, like from the side. Yeah, and you yeah, make, yeah, yeah. yeah. Side quest. Exactly. Like and yeah. so I, I figured out like, this is something I did in 2021, I think, end of 2021. I was like, all right, I have an audience. Mm -hmm. Let me open a, a dropshipping store, take it from zero to uh, like uh, whatever I can in 30 days and then like make a case study of it and yep. sell it on the site. Uh, and, and it's just going to be a fun experience. Did that um, was zero to like 80K uh, in like 50 days, something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and then I sold it. And then this is something that like, it covers whatever I need. Like yep. it's, it's being sold. I don't push it. I don't run ads or something, but just because of one, it provides value. So a lot of word of mouth. And second of all, like um, I have my, my uh, YouTube, which runs, it gets like, I don't know, hundred thousand views a month um, on its own. So mm. this is being sold. And now I'm like, all right, I have my basic 
needs covered. I don't need more money. I don't want to be uh, uh, cash rich at this point. Yep. I want to build uh, equity value. I want to build a brand. And I understand that in order to do that, I have to give up some stuff. Yep. So I, if I'm going to take from the business, it's going to slow the growth. Obviously, I don't want to be break even at all. I don't think it's, uh, it was the mindset for 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, people have, have changed like, and, and they understand a lot of people that ran on break even. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, but I, I feel a lot of the people who ran on break even is because they were forced to like the business in general, just not profitable enough. I mean, sure. That's right for a lot of cases, but a lot mm -hmm. of other cases, like people were like, I mean, sure. I, I could be profitable doing 10 million, but like, let me break even or lose a little bit and do 20 million and next year. The LTV will make, and then you find out next year that, didn't forecast LTV right, and then yeah. you're, you're, I mean, nothing's yep. gonna work. Um, and so people were prioritizing growth um, 2020, 2021, and I think 2022, 2023, people are starting to understand that profit is important. Yep. Now, obviously, if you're growing two, three, four hundred percent a year, you're not gonna be able to, to show profit at all, or maybe you're gonna be able to, but not as much. That makes sense. Um, but if you're not growing as much, I mean, you should be profitable. Um, and it's really a decision thing. And for me, I, I do want to be profitable. I don't want to be 20, 30, yep. 40%. That, that doesn't make sense for me. That means I'm leaving growth on the table. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be at zero because I don't, I don't think that's smart either. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I have a, a mentor. I mean, we're doing like calls every other week. Mm -hmm. um, and he owns, I think, the biggest Shopify store, like fastest growing right now, maybe the top three biggest um, and he's like listen we grew 200% like from nine figures to multi multi nine, nine figures um, and he's like and we're gonna profit about 20 25% so I mean it's if, if you need to profit don't don't tell me the D stuff <laughs> figure it out and I was like okay I'll figure it out and, and we did so yep. yeah I mean don't don't break even if you're not growing super 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 fast and yep. also be mindful of that but it's it's a decision if you want to if you want to be nine figure multi eight figures and you want to do it in two three four years you have to to yep. not think of right now and today and i need the rolex now and i need the, the car or whatever understood yeah um personally for me i'm 26 uh this year uh i realized like i actually realized that concept quite late into the game i mean i am only been entrepreneurship for like four and a half years i'm not as exposed really? yeah i'm actually not as exposed to you uh, really? Yeah, so like my learning curve is like really, really like compressed, insane, right? That's uh, so I only uh, realized that concept probably in year three, <laughs> wow. which which is like in my mind, I was like, oh shit, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like I should I should have been doing this like from the get go, right? But obviously, when you don't have money, then you you think like that. Of course. Um, my question is, how how did you find out that um, so quickly? Yeah, I think um, from the get go, I, I understood. How can I, like, I don't know why, but from when I started, I was like, I didn't think, I guess, how normal people would think. Like, I want to make my first million. I want to, whatever. I was like, I want to do a $500 million exit. Why? I don't know. That's how, that's how I. <laughs> from the get-go. From the get-go. Okay, like, okay. You're insane. Is, this, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is what I want to do. I mean, maybe it's because, as I said, I grew up in a place where, yeah, yeah. where like ha having a house that is like $10 million, it's, it's a thing. Yep. And so you get desensitized. You don't, okay. you don't understand. And so I don't think I've ever had, uh, I was at the point. I mean, I have doing this in business at the point where I was like, fuck, I, we can run out of money at any point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like uh, in my normal life, I didn't understand what money is. Now, you know, I see the numbers. I was like, all right, I heard this exit, that exit, especially in Israel, like uh, there's cyber the, the companies. Tech, the tech exits. I mean, yeah, yeah it's insane. Yeah. Every year, two, three companies, and Israel is small, two, three companies selling for 500, a billion, two billion. Like yeah, there's yeah. Yeah. one that was, I think, valued at 11 million right now, insane stuff. And then you're like, all right, then 500 is not that much, <laughs> but it is, uh, <laughs> it is. And so I, I went into it with a gecko. And so in my mind, when we hit records, I'm like, okay, we're 10% mm. uh, of the way there, 5% of the way there. And I don't think, oh, wow, we, we've achieved. Um, and, and it's a curse because you don't enjoy a lot of the stuff because yep. in your mind, you've, you've already, in my mind, when I hit a, a milestone, I was like, I've, 
it, it was supposed to happen, but it's not my end goal, and I don't get to enjoy it as much. But I think it's mm. it's a prerequisite to be able to get to these. High. If you don't dream about being a, a billionaire or hitting a five hundred million a billion valuation, you're not going to be able to make it to a hundred because you need to dream big in order yeah, to get there. No one yeah. plans to make ten million and accidentally makes a billion. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Uh, if I was uh, Jewish, for example. <laughs> I'm not Jewish, but if I was Jewish and I live in Israel or whatever, uh, and then I see, you know, Daniel, it's like, oh, the guy looks like me, I could potentially be him, right? I'm inspired by him. And I'm pretty sure a lot of your audience feels the same way, right? But then uh, they could come to you and say, hey, but Daniel lived in a good zip code, right? Daniel had a good upbringing or whatever it is, right? To those people, like, what, what do you have to say to them in terms of, yeah? I mean, it's true. Like, in life, you have, I mean, a lot of people know that life isn't a fair game, right? Yep. You get, you get, you get stuff that plays to your advantage and you get stuff that plays to your disadvantage. I've had a lot of stuff that I didn't learn that I don't know. Um, and, and I think that, for example, I just heard of a company that does $500 million a year and they're basically doing uh, services for a basement, like cleaning your basement, stuff like this in the US. Um, and I was like, S someone didn't, they didn't know anything about technology. They didn't get access to computer. They didn't know anything. They knew how to literally clean basements, but mm -hmm. they had the 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 uh, courage and the understanding. All right, I can make a business of it and and make it happen. I mean, they were good enough to get clients. They were good enough to create enough margin to bring someone else to work under them, yep. and then have the margin to to profit off of it, and yep. then bring more employees and grow it. And like he said, it was it took me 20, 30 years, but now it's making I don't know uh, five hundred a year, and and I don't know how much of it is profit, but probably quite a bit. Five hundred mil is still five hundred mil. So yeah, so it's it's. I mean, for me, uh, there are a lot of things that I didn't know that I still don't know, um, and there are a lot of disadvantages. There are advantages, obviously. Maybe for this specific game, I've had more advantages. Uh, but if you think about it, like I'm thinking about people who are in my age group or in my classes, like my, my and me and my friend are the only ones that I know that are like anywhere near mm. like this uh, revenue or, or level. Yeah. Um, and the other people have basically the same advantages. So why, why is that not happening? And you can say, if you have money, then you don't feel a lack of money. So why would you go out of your way to work eight, 10 hours a day? Why would you uh, go through all this pain and, and when you can literally you know, get whatever you want? Um, and obviously my parents did a great job. They didn't give me whatever I want. Um, mm. they, they really, today I understand, but like they were really over um, like, you know, a thousand dollars. If you look at a grand scheme of things, it wasn't a lot of money to them. But when I wanted something that cost a thousand dollars when I was young, I don't know, a car that ran automatically, I could go into it. They were like, that's so expensive. Why would do you, you don't need it, stuff like this. <laughs> and every yeah, yeah. time I grew up, like, Everyone got an iPhone. They said, no, you're, you're 10. You don't need an iPhone. Um, stuff like this. And over time, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't spoiled. I did have some kind of understanding mm. that if I want to mm. be independent, I'm going to need money. Yep. But, but still, I think that uh, when, you, when you grow up or when you understand you want to become something, you need to look at yourself. You need to say, all right, where are my advantages? Um, and, and for a lot of people I know, they came from nothing and yep. this was their advantage. Like they, I didn't have anything and I'm going to work as hard as I can to get something. And I think a lot of them are working harder than me because they had, it comes from a lack and this is something that's hard to replicate. Um, and there are benefits and, and def definitely, um, stuff that like it, it could be a benefit. It could not be a benefit, but it depends on how you take it. So a lot of working on yourself and understanding. Yeah. Understood. Great parents. You're not out of touch. You still understand pain. Uh, yeah, I yeah. get okay, understand. Um, we transition more to congratulations on breaking eight figures. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's number one. The second thing is that uh, I mean I I help companies scale that before, so I, I understand that the challenges at three to four mil very very different from eight. Yeah. Right. Three to four is you're just trying to crack front end acquisition, yeah. get enough traffic ads, conversion rate, etc. Um, what are the challenges that you face now that you didn't expect um, come? Yeah. Now, like. Right now, after okay, the scale? Yeah, no, no, no. After no, the scale? Uh, yeah, like during the scale, okay, you're like, okay, you're at this revenue stage, tons of inventory, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what, what is the challenge that you didn't expect? Um, yeah, I mean, like the, one of the biggest challenge, challenges this year were cash flow. Um, okay. Once you understand the cash flow is a reality, like, all right, when, you, when we were doing, I don't know, one million a year, then sure, or we were pacing for that, all right, you can put down, I don't know, three, 400K uh, for inventory and, and it's all right. And once you get to, to a certain point, um, then it's not 
it's a lot it's of money. very scary it's a lot of money to very put scary. down yep and especially when you go open a new market what if that market is not going to want it like it's much bigger but if it's not going to buy it then mm -hmm. what am i going to do with this inventory I, yep. can, I can throw it away and so there was a lot of balance there where you need to like i learned how important it is to forecast like this is the first year i actually had to forecast and i actually felt the pressure of all right we're not gonna freaking hit the forecast this is bad we're gonna be uh minus on the cash flow and people don't understand you can be profitable mm. and still have no cash in the ne bank. negative cash yep. flow yep. and you can like don't have money to pay people even though you're profitable because a lot of money is basically sitting there as inventory and once you get to this point this is basically because you forecasted incorrectly and you bought more inventory than you needed and at this point you have two options either the bank agrees to get, to loan you money mm. against your inventory because they have uh, faith that you are going to sell this inventory eventually and you're going to pay uh, interest and obviously it's going to hurt or they're not going to be able to do this and then basically you, you don't have money so you you're pretty much if you don't have outside money like mm. from yourself or an investor or something you're basically screwed and, and and you you lose the business and so we had a very very aggressive forecast this year because of me aggressive meaning like we, bought, we, bought, to... we bought a lot of a lot okay. Okay. and and like i had a I started figuring out the the, um, the acquisition strategy, um, and and I remember we grew like from March to April like 300 percent, then we grow another 30 percent uh, in May, and I was like, all right, I got it. We're gonna keep on growing 50 percent every month until the end of the year. And then we next month minus 20 percent, next month minus 30 percent. I was like, oh no, we bought a lot of inventory for Q4. And then I had so much pressure to figure it out and to make it work. And <laughs> the stuff. international market. And I, it was literally, yeah. if I'm not going to figure okay. it out, I'm going to literally lose the business. And so I was okay. like, I must figure it out. And eventually I did, but it was super stressful. And, and today, like, I understand that this was an unnecessary risk to take for year one, where you don't know the trends. You don't know that like uh, specific markets behave differently. Mm -hmm. That for some reason they don't have a specific holiday or whatever. Uh, there, some months are gonna be crazy good, and mm -hmm. you don't really know why unless you you're into that market. Mm -hmm. And some months are gonna suck. Yep. Um, and I got kind of lucky and also overworked. Like I definitely, uh, I've never been as stressed in my life ever. Um, but yeah, I mean we we pulled through eventually. Like we sold out before the end of the year which is great we we hit the forecast and more uh this also brought a lot of a lot of uh a lot of stress to us but i mean yeah this is the game this is the game okay who i'm guessing your accountant is helping you forecast as well right or are you it can't be you you're bringing experts on consultants helping you right in terms of what like uh, cash flow management and forecasting i mean um my partner has like Finance background, uh, kind of a fun, like not actual, but like she learned it. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, obviously, I, I spoke to people like uh, there's the mentor. Like I told him, listen, we're having trouble forecasting. He's like, listen, me too. Like <laughs> it's, it's like this. suck it up, Daniel. He said like until until <laughs> yeah. he said like, I think fifty or hundred million a year. We were doing it with Excel, and this is how it is. Like this is the hard part. Figure it out. Um, but but like obviously he shared like the templates, and also I talked to someone else who. Uh, has worked with a VC-backed uh, um, mm. e-com company, yep. so they sold a lot. I don't know how profitable they were, but he had—he's really like really a shark when it comes to finance. So he helped us a lot. Uh, but eventually, a lot of it is based on me because I need to say I think that this month we're going to sell mm. 1.3x the a regular month, and this month is going to be actually pretty bad because we don't have uh, Father's Day or Mother's Day or whatever. Yep. Um, so a lot of this, um, and it's a lot of a guessing game. It's a guessing game, basically. It's not a lot of it. It's basically what it is. Uh, but you get better at it, um, and I think next year is going to be interesting. Okay. Technically, because you are the guy, you're the main man in the international markets. So yeah. you're, just, you're seeing the rest first, so you're feeling the data much faster than the rest, right? Yeah. So that, you're forecasting based on that? Yeah, based on that, based okay. on obviously I look at like the performance of what's been going on for these months. I mm -hmm. try to account for like whatever holidays or whatever uh, there is in a specific region. Yep. But, but yeah, basically I'm, I'm saying I think here we're going to sell 150% more. All right, let's, yeah, this is how it is. Okay. <laughs> it sounds you, don't like have, you, you don't have data. It's yes, the first year. You what need to start spending to get the data in yeah. the first place. Okay. Uh, do you feel you are too reliant on paid traffic? The reason, okay, the reason why I say that is right, it's because in the last 12 months or so, I learned SEO, I learned Amazon ads. So like, I realized that, it's, oh, I learned PR also. So I, I realized that, oh shit, there's a whole nother world out there that's just completely non-reliant on 
uh, paying money to the, uh, to the platforms. Yeah. So any thoughts on that? For sure. I think I am. I think we it happened to us. We were, we were like over the spend limit. Like on November, we hit our spend limit. Like we work with Facebook on credit lines. Talking about cash flow, like the thirty day. Yeah, I'm, I'm paying okay. them thirty days after yeah, um, yeah. because obviously I wanna I wanna be able to cash flow. I don't wanna. Yeah. So so a lot of people don't know this, but at a certain point you just go to Facebook and say, hey, listen, I wanna pay thirty days after, and they're like, if if they trust you, you have a good like. Uh, history with them they're gonna allow you to do that um and so we've done that but they give you a certain credit line like yep. they're not gonna be able to they're not gonna let you spend 20 million dollars and and just not pay yeah, yeah we don't yeah so yeah they give you a limit and so for us like i told my rep hey raise my limit i think i'm gonna uh scale by a lot soon he said it happened but it didn't happen and then someday i just see i wake up in the morning and we're like 80 percent down from yesterday and i was like what's going on and then the I, spend or the revenue? Revenue, and because okay. I, I wake up, I open the Shopify store, see what's up, go, and then I see that we're not spending, and I was like, hey, what's going on? Then I see that like we can literally do anything, and it's Saturday, and what can what can happen? So it screwed us. I screwed like optimization for a couple of days. We we figured it out eventually, mm. but like a screwed up optimization cost us, I think, tens of thousands of dollars, uh, which sucks. Um, but, but yeah, that, that brought me to the understanding. Also, I thought about it before, how reliant we are on paid advertising. But mm -hmm. also, I think at some point, um, you should be reliant. And, and I think that you need to understand, like, what, at one point in time, does it make sense to, to uh, spread out and not be um, as, as reliant on a single platform? And I think that at this time, Facebook is so much better than any other platform in terms mm. of like how fast the raw stability, raw stability yeah. and scale, all of these that it makes sense to like, if I want to grow as fast as I can, as hard as I can, I cannot think of how can I build a business that has like the maximum chances of surviving throughout 10 years. No, um, I need to get to, to 50 a year. Yep. Then I'm going to revise and see, all right, I have so-and-so customers, existing customers. I can get more revenue per customers over time. Um, how can I expand to TikTok? How can I expand to Google? But I think a lot of people go multi, multi-channel mm, too, too early. Yep. Um, and they don't understand like I, for me i just this year proved to me how much scale you can have when you focus on one channel and you just go as hard as you can mm. and i think facebook by far is, is the biggest and and yeah it's a risk i'm willing to take understood so now you're single product single channel uh so kind, kind 80%. of yeah kind of okay yeah and uh why can't you hire someone else to figure another platform out or is it just a trust like you know uh bandwidth so. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a bandwidth thing. Um, for Amazon, like for example, um, the, my mentor told me like, first of all, he said, you need to get into Amazon. Mm. We're, we're doing that. We talked to the, to, to the guys who set up their Amazon. Yep. We're gonna start with this uh, pretty soon. And he said like, listen, it's money on the table because for us, 20, 25% of the revenue comes from Amazon. And he said like, I think even if you're don't gonna run ads on Amazon. You're spending a ton on Facebook people, already. It's like Google. People yes. go and search for your brand yeah, on yeah, Amazon. Yeah. And so he said like, all right, you're doing 100K days, you, you could have gotten like 20K uh, extra from Amazon. So, I mean, that that's that's a new learning. I, I wasn't aware of this. Mm. And also, uh, for this to happen, you need more inventory. You need to send inventory to FBA, stuff like this. And this year, we were apparently short on inventory. So, mm. next year, we're going to be prepared. We're going to do this. And when it comes to SEO, it's a bit of a, I don't know how it was. I didn't dive deep into it but i understood that it's still a long-term thing like you're gonna see the results of what you do today in six 12 months yep. um and i cannot think in these timelines i'd rather like find out a way i can like do stuff that affects me today yep. and at, at a certain point i can get someone to do this for me so that you know it's just a prioritization thing yep understood uh i think i know your business sort of i think i know your product uh let me guess uh is there any, uh, in terms of UGC creators or like creative production in general, how do you run that ship? Because super reliant on Facebook and I'm pretty sure your search volumes on Google are not so high for that specific yeah, sort yeah. of product. Yeah. Um, could you share with us how you... Ah, creative, was, uh, it was a hard thing to crack. Um, what I've done to begin with, I was like, all right, I'm gonna get like 50 creators, 30, 50, whatever send them a product, pay for like a UGC, give them sort of like some sort of guideline, yep. get a lot of content. I have a content library now. Then I can get some editor or like a creative strategist I, mm. I trust. Yep. And I tell him, hey, 
we have uh, these uh, uh, UGCs there. We have uh, product uh, footage. We have recorder uh, studio or, or even myself, like I go and I film it sometimes. Mm. All right, create mashups. And then they start creating versions. And then like, you understand that like from these 50 videos and maybe 50 other videos of the product you make with your iPhone or a studio or whatever, you can suddenly make a thousand, 2000 creatives. I think last month we produced 400 or 500 unique creatives. 400? Yeah, something like this. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, it's so like 10, 10 shows a day, basically. Yeah, yeah, something like this. I, okay. I spent two hours just uploading it to, to Facebook because it's so buggy <laughs> right now. But yeah, I mean, it, it was crazy, but it's, at a certain point, you can make so many variations. Um, and, and yeah, it was fantastic. And it took us a while to figure it out, like who yeah. our audience is, in what type of creators are working and what type of editing style and all of this stuff. And obviously every once in a while we're doing like a completely different thing because sometimes that thing hits and then yep. you have a completely new concept. Yep. Um, but, but the way I like to do stuff is to how can I make something as scalable as possible without paying as much as I can. Like being bootstrapped is yeah, what yeah. you have to do. And yeah. so I found out that like getting a lot of content and having a content library and getting someone else to mesh up mm. uh, and, and create a puzzle type of thing is the best way to do that. And so this is what we've done. Okay. Are you telling the creators, uh, here's a script, here's the guideline, here are some B-roll shots I want, shot one, shot two, shot three, or like just do whatever? It really depends. So if they're like, so I, I separate into multiple things. First of all, if there are agencies mm. um, that are doing the entire thing for me, they take a markup. I've had mixed ex experiences with both. They're way too expensive in my opinion. Yep. Um, but some of them did work. Um, and, and so this was nice for those that, that I sent basically no brief. These didn't come out as good. Um, and then like there's the in the middle thing where like you either give them like, a, all right, you're, these are the bullet po points you need to hit, but do your thing or literally what you said, like here's the visual one, visual two, visual three. Mm. Um, I find that for good creators, it, like you should give them more space. And for people who are literally like, they don't even consider themselves UGC creators. They're yeah, just yeah. like pay me money and I'll film something. They have to be more specific. But, but honestly, for me, like the best thing is just like, go film yourself like this and let my editor add B-rolls and, and play with the edits and stuff. And this is gonna, this is gonna work usually best unless they're very good creators. Okay. Okay. This will be our last uh, information, specific question. Be respectful of your time. Um, for yourself, right? I know your goals. I know where you want to go to. Um, recurring or LTV is super important. Yeah. Right? CAC super high, very hard to acquire nowadays. Um, for your specific niche, which we won't say, but <laughs> for your specific niche, um, I guess, how do you plan to do that? Um, yeah. I mean, um our product is, is truly good. It's a good product. I yep. know from... Uh, good experience on the first purchase. So yeah, a great experience. Yep. Great experience. And also um, people like to... Because of how good the experience is and, mm. and people like to talk about it and share it. So I see Positive a lot of... association. I see a lot of word of mouth. So mm. I know that for each customer, like, uh, I don't know, point one, point two, people will come back. Yep. Um, other people, which is very nice. Also, like, repeat is, is pretty high on like oh okay uh, this niche is uh, people don't regularly buy again but for us because of like our unique positioning mm -hmm. um people do come back and also how good the product is and the experience we put a lot of uh, emphasis on this especially me like i'm paying usually what people pay on packaging i pay i think almost 10 times that um just to make the experience better mm -hmm. um and, okay. and to make sure people people are like, happy when they get it because like how you get the product is almost more important than the product itself. Uh, you can learn it from all the luxury brands. Like if you think like Rolex, it comes in a nice big box and stuff. And eventually like it's a watch. If it came in a plastic bag, you really, you'd be like, man, <laughs> man. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, doesn't yeah. cost a lot to, to produce yes. the, the Rolex, but, yeah, but still yeah. it's the experience and it's the, the, the entire thing. And so I wanted to, to whatever I'm selling to give that experience of like, oh, wow, that's nice. So uh, they're, maybe they'd be happy gifting it. Maybe they'd be happy buying it again because they had a nice experience. Um, and so, I don't know, it's because again, we're early with international, but from uh, my other market, I know that we have a pretty high repeat. Mm. Uh, but still, my thing is like, and this also my mentor says like, for us, they, they grew, as I said, like from nine figures to multi, multi nine figures. And he said like, our CAC went down. Um, how is this possible? He said that mm. once you hit a certain point, first of all, you have a lot of unlocks. Once you have a lot of 
traffic coming through, like CRO, all of this stuff. Mm. But more than that, like at some points, you, your brand starts to get like allure and people know you. And, and, and you have less top of funnel because yep. everyone yep. has heard of you. Yep. Um, and, and then like CAC does go down. Um, and this is something that obviously we're not at that scale, but I think that over time CAC will be able to go down for us. And also I'm doing everything in my power, power to be profitable on first purchase. Um, and this means that I'm very, very like doing whatever I can, landing page testing, uh, um, doing like creative analysis to try to improve each creative, like hook is 30%, let's make it 40% with the same body, yep. all of this stuff, um, uh, tests on the product pages all the time, pricing tests if necessary, like I'm doing everything I can to squeeze uh, every bit of profit. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I hope it'll work and keep on uh, improving. Okay. By the way, uh, I really think 30 minute VSLs will actually work for your product. Now that I think about it. Really? We'll talk about that later after this. <laughs> but I think it really worked. Yeah. Okay. So guys, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Daniel, do you have any final words? Oh, and also, uh, how do people find you? And if you want to promote anything, please, please just promote. How do people find <laughs> please, you? Yes. Um, Honestly, I don't have anything to promote because I mean, if you speak Hebrew, you have my my. Uh, you can type my name on YouTube, Daniel Moldowski. You'll, you'll find my channel. Um, uh, we'll, we'll link the channel below. So. Yeah, I mean, I have Twitter. So on Twitter, saying Daniel Moldowski, M O L D A W S K Y. Um, and I mean, that's it. I'm happy to to talk to a lot of people to uh, connect and and I mean, yeah. But, but, at this community is like so small, but I mean, you, you meet so many cool and interesting yeah, yeah. people and like, I'm very happy to help people who are maybe the seven figure range that are uh, struggling with what I have struggled like in the past couple of years. If you're maybe like smaller, bigger, whatever, I'm happy to answer questions and, yeah, and, and connect. All right. Thank you so much, Daniel. And hey. thank you guys for your time. All right. That was nice. <laughs>